When an NBA player turns into a superstar, it's clear that not much can stop them on the court. But unfortunately for these 13 stars, it was off the court things that eventually ruined their careers and completely ended a bunch of them. No matter how good you are, if you're a problem player, it has its consequences. And that's kind of what happened to Allen Iverson, because he's easily one of the greatest players of all time. But for someone known as a superstar and Hall of Famer, his career didn't exactly go like most others. And the unfortunate part was that it had nothing to do with him actually on the court. Court. Because the same ego that gave him the confidence to score 30 to a game or lead his team to the NBA Finals was the ego that caused his downfall. All of his Philly and Denver days were great, but then everything really came to a head in 2008 when he was traded to Detroit, where he refused to play the end of the season when asked to come off the bench, even though he was putting up career lows across the board. So he joined the Grizzlies, and after coming off the bench for them for the first three games, he said he wasn't going to do that, so they terminated his contract. So he signed for the league minimum to return to Philly, who needed a starting point guard because theirs had just got injured. And then he ended up just retiring that season. So yeah, not the ideal way to end things. He could have had a lot of great years in that second half of his career, but instead, it all kinda hurt his legacy. And that same ego and non-caring attitude was what contributed to him losing most all of his money before even retiring for good. I want to thank Established Titles for sponsoring today's video, and also helping me become a Lord. That's right, I can now legally be referred to as Lord Austin. Then I could even use that Lord title to put on my credit cards, plane tickets, dating profiles, if I had one and much much more and that's only one of the reasons i'm a huge supporter of established titles you see with title packs you're buying at least one square foot of dedicated land with a unique plot number on a private estate in edelston scotland which gives you an official certificate with a crest and owning land there is what makes you either a lord or a lady thanks to a historic scotland custom but not only does it make a great gift for yourself or someone else but established titles plants a tree with every order and works with one tree planted and trees for the future that will preserve the natural woodlands of scotland and help in global reform station efforts. The first 200 people purchasing a title pack using my link will effectively be next to my plot, meaning together we can pretty much create a kingdom. It makes an amazing last minute gift, and Established Titles is actually running an early Black Friday sale right now. Plus, if you use the code SWEAT, you get an additional 10% off on top of that. So go to EstablishedTitles.com slash SWEAT to get your gifts now, and help support the channel. Shout out to them for the sponsor, now let's get back to the video. Sean Kemp was another all-time great that really suffered after he left his main team, and what happened to Sean was really unfortunate and prevented him from having a lot of good years. So on the Seattle Supersonics himself and Gary Payton were one of the best duos in the NBA. And in Sean's best year, they even had a 64 win season and made the NBA Finals. And his whole career and game were built off of him being a super athlete and using his size, speed, and athleticism to his advantage. And it worked. He averaged nearly 20 points per game for his entire 8 years in Seattle. Well, when the team finally traded him to the Cavaliers at 28 years old, he almost instantly started having issues with his weight. By his second season on the team, Sean had gone from from about 240 pounds to weighing 315 pounds, with some people even saying he was easily north of 400. But shockingly, he was still able to average 20 and 9 that year, then eventually was traded to the Blazers at 31 years old. And this is when all of his off-court issues really caught up with him. He got to the Blazers and now averaged 6 points a game off the bench, and it was all thanks to his weight problems and him abusing substances. So he was waived after only 2 years, and his last year in the league was pretty much the same. The story of Lamar Odom's a pretty weird one, because coming into the NBA, he was a revolutionary player. It was one of the first 6'10 dudes that played power forward, but could play like a guard. One of the first almost positionless players. And that helped him be a star for the first 12 years of his career. Then eventually, he found a home on the Los Angeles Lakers, helping them to two NBA championships, being a vital piece for the team and also winning him the Sixth Man of the Year award. But in that very next season, he was involved in two traumatic passings. Then the Lakers traded him as part of the Chris Paul deal, and it was reversed. So he felt disrespected by the team and demanded that they actually did trade him now. So he wound up on the Mavericks and everything just fell apart for him after that. He wasn't mentally there at practices, got out of shape, sat at his first ever game due to a coach's decision, averaged career lows across the board, and it even got to the point where Mark Cuban questioned if he was committed to playing basketball at halftime of a game. And after that confrontation, he sat out the rest of the season. Then he played one more season in the league before his whole life kind of publicly spiraled out of control. And it seems like it all traced back to that one off season. We all know Jay Williams as an analyst today, but at one point in time, he was a second overall pick and probably had the most disappointing career of all time because it wasn't even like he was playing hard then had a career ending injury or anything. He played one single season for the Chicago Bulls then was speeding on a motorcycle in the offseason, crashed it and pretty much destroyed the lower half of his body with a fractured pelvis, a severed main nerve in his leg and three torn ligaments in his knee including his ACL. He promised the Bulls he would do all he could to rehab and get back on the court for them but then he got addicted to painkillers and other substances during that process and never 
stepped on an NBA court again. A guy named Royce White isn't as great as the others I've mentioned, but he was still good enough to have an NBA career. I mean, he was drafted as 16th overall by the Rockets, but then it became public that he had a lot of mental health issues and was scared to fly on planes, which was a major issue since NBA players are required to take about 100 flights per season. And even though the team agreed to get him a bus, the problem still continued. A few games into the year, he had a dispute with the team over their mental health department, so he was assigned to the D-League where he refused to play. And it took six months to change his mind where he finally played a bit, but then refused to play in the playoffs. So he was let go, but then signed with the Kings, where he played his first and only three official NBA games and recorded no stats before they let him go too. Listen, I think that talent was there, but it seemed like everything else about the game didn't line up with them, so it just wasn't a good fit. As for Andrew Bynum, well, his career infamously ended due to a bunch of knee injuries, or that's how you may remember it, because he was already pretty much on his way out when the knee injuries happened. I think playing on the Lakers and winning championships with Kobe always kept him in balance, but once he was traded, it was all downhill. Now, the man did have like 30 knee injuries, but just as many off-court troubles. The dude once injured his knee while bowling, which I don't even know how that's possible. Plus, how weak do your knees have to be for that to happen? He had that incident at the Cavs practice where he shot the ball every single time he touched it, no matter where he was on the court, then failed on the Pacers. Even if he was healthy, I feel like all these off-court issues would have led to him being outside of the league anyways. And it's kind of true because he attempted a comeback in 2018, but obviously by that point, four years out of the league, no team wanted him, which ended his career at 27 years old. OJ Mayo and Tyreek Evans both had their careers ended due to using banned substances in the league. It started with a three-year ban, but in both of their cases, by the time they were eligible to be reinstated, no team wanted to take a risk on them, and no team wanted a guy that hadn't really played basketball in that long of a time. Now, Josh Howard isn't that popular of an NBA name, but he played for the Mavs in the mid-2000s, and he was a great player, becoming an all-star, contributing in the playoffs, and scoring about 20 points a game. But he messed it all up. 2007, in the middle of a tough playoff series, he did an interview where he talked about how he enjoyed smoking, which caused a huge distraction for the team at the time and wasn't even necessary for him to talk about. But the playoffs ended and everyone forgot about the incident, so he was safe. But then it was just three months later and a video leaked of the national anthem playing at a football game, and he was caught laughing saying he didn't care about it. And nobody forgot about this one. The criticism didn't stop, so he was traded to the Wizards, and from there he barely ever played, and just three seasons later he wound up retiring at 32. He went from averaging 20 points a game to retiring three years later. And it was because he was in two situations that could have easily been avoided, and if he would have been trying to take a stand on those topics, it would have made perfect sense. But he wasn't, and the whole thing really cost him. Delonte West was a player that was always in and out of trouble in the league, all for things that weren't even involved with it. Whether it was receiving suspensions, being LeBron's dad, spending all of his money to where he had to work at Home Depot in the off-seasons, or getting arrested for riding a four-wheeler while openly carrying weapons down the street. While he was a great basketball player, he suffered mentally, and it's why he's been in the situation he has been ever since. And it's a shame that eventually his career just ended because nobody wanted to deal with him on the roster anymore. And speaking of wasted potential, Gilbert Arenas had a lot of it. At one point, he was averaging 30 points a game for the Wizards, and individually he was extremely talented, but never necessarily led his team to wins. And on top of that, off the court he was a troublemaker, with him having publicly admitted to scamming banks out of money for years by spending $50,000 at the club, then getting his friends to sign the receipt and reporting it to the bank saying his cards were stolen. And he said that he ran over 60 red lights in a four month span at one point by using old license plates, all during his playing career. And his off-court antics eventually got the best of him, with his whole locker room and pre-game gun incident. He faced a long suspension and eventually when he returned, he was just never the same player, having dropped off big time and retiring after only two more seasons. So it's clear he just wasn't a good fit in the NBA, at least personality-wise. The same thing could be said about Stefan Marbury, who was a multiple-time All-Star, but couldn't get along with coaches. And it happened for years. He didn't mesh well with anyone in management, and that followed him. It gave him a bad reputation in the league, and even though his game never dropped off, it was actually him that decided to go off and play in China, where he made a long career out of it. So I think the fact that he had too big of an ego to play in the league was what really ruined things for him. And speaking of massive egos, there's Latrell Sprewell. And you thought the Draymond punch was bad? Well, Latrell choked out his head coach in practice, which is like 10 times worse. Then his career ended when he turned on a $21 million deal because he said it wasn't enough to feed his family. He then retired and proceeded to go bankrupt soon after. So yeah, that's awkward.